G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Right, a bit of a late one from me. Had work today, so haven't had a lot of time to put uh, into getting this video done, unfortunately. I've got to go to sleep and get up early again tomorrow. But anyway, let's have a quick look at the markets. All right, they have bounced back a little bit, so now we're up above 2.3 trillion again, but we've been here before, and then we roll over again. So I'm still not sold that we're out of this just yet. 49,000 sounds good, but we've been up to 50 something thousand and we just keep stepping down ever so slightly. But 46,000 is holding really well, and we'll get to that shortly. So let's just have a look at the market overall. Again, up 3%, so that's nice. Bitcoin dominance over 40% has fallen ever so slightly. There's a little bit of volume there. People are getting a little bit more excited and wanting to put money in, but look. It just doesn't last at the moment. You know, we go up for a day, but then we go down by more. Then we go up for a day, and then we go down by more the following day. And that's the pattern it's generally been following at the moment. And we now have a weekend coming up. Now, we do see pumps over weekends sometimes. So are we back to now sort of dumping, you know, during the middle of the week and pumping through the weekend? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But Bitcoin, still under 50000 Can it get over? That's what we're waiting to see. And ETH price is still super cheap, so that's nice. All right, we can see there's green basically across the board, and that's nice. So what's performed the best? Maybe AVAX is going to be up there having a look at that, but we'll wait and see. All right, Kadena, 20%. Uh, Xfin Network, 20%. Stack, 17 Helium, 17 So we got plenty of double-digit movers right across the board. Very nice. Luna, Rune, Basic Attention Token, so there we go, Sandbox even making moves, so that's very nice. What about the flip side of the coin, though? What hasn't performed well? Well, not much at all. Near Protocol, EOS, Gala continues to kind of find its way down, but maybe it's found the bottom. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, and then we're starting into the gain. So hardly any losses and some nice gains there. But this is what worries me. The big daddy of them all. We still keep setting in lower highs. So this high has not been able to breach this point. So we haven't been able to get over the really the 50, sort of $51,000 level. And this is a bit of an indecision candle at the moment. So we've got to wait and see, will this you know be green and pump up or is this going to roll over and we're going to come back down in here again. Now the lows, really, they don't go much lower than 60, 46, sorry, and a half thousand dollars. That kind of is the low. We've seen it wick below, but it's generally holding tight. But I just don't know if we're going to hold it for much longer. My gut feeling is we probably see more downside again until sort of sometime in January. It might be sort of really late December, like after Christmas and things like that. We might see some downwards movement. And again, I still think this is in play. So until I see a set a new high, and look, we can have one candle that goes a little bit above, gets everyone super excited and all the longs jump in. And then we again roll back down to something like this. That is really what I'm looking for at the moment. There's still a little bit of bullish sentiment every time Bitcoin gets a bit lower and too many, it's the leverage stuff. That's really what kills us. As soon as everyone starts to try and go long in leverage, you can almost guarantee that we're gonna go down. So until all the leverage is kind of gone, I'm just not sure. We have, as you can see, green, red, green, red, green, red, green, and are we now about to see more red to push us down lower? Like I said, I would really have some buy orders. And again, never financial advice. I won't give you that. This is just my personal opinion. But I would have some buy orders for Bitcoin starting right here at about $42,250. And, you know, set, you know, a couple sort of through there if you want. And then I'd be targeting the next uh, level down again, which is about 37400 We can round it off. And again, I would put a buy order in around 33500 because that's right in the middle of the next CME gap. Now, no guarantees in life, as I've said before, that those uh, will get filled or the Bitcoin's even coming down here. But if it does and you've got buy orders, then you've bought it cheap. But that is all dependent on whether you think this would be the bottom or do you think we're going lower. And that's the million dollar question. I can't tell you. I still think we're in a bull market. I don't think there's any been any news to say that we're really out. But again, I did some rebalancing and I took 10% of my entire portfolio and I put it into stable coins and cash just because I didn't have enough and on the off chance that we do continue to go down. Because guess what I've done with some of that uh, cash? Put in buy orders. 
And so if it continues to go down, the buy orders will get triggered and I will buy. And with my sort of fortnightly money, I'm not really doing anything at the moment. I will chip away at Bitcoin a little bit. And again, if we continue to go down, the pro projects that I like, if they get to certain targets, I'll have some buy orders in. But they will not be anything crazy until I know, or at least, you know, you never know, I have a feeling of where the market's going to go. And at the moment, I'm not sure where the market's going. Hence why I put 10% into stable coins and I want to actually increase that. Like I said, I want to have 10 to 20% at all times. Now, that's not a long-term strategy for the cash because cash, I agree, is trash. I would rather have it invested, but you can't buy the dips and you can't properly... Uh, allocate funds if you just have no cash and that's the mistake I was making I was allocating too heavy at the wrong times when I should have been allocating much heavier in the dips but then also remembering I don't ever want to have less than 10% cash so I'll be focusing more on cash at the moment uh, waiting for the market to make its mind up all right last but not least now there's only one bit of news that's really out there and at the moment and it is the Fed you know they've decided that they're gonna uh, up the tapering by 30 billion dollars every couple of months but the thing is it's only taking off 30 billion dollars uh, every month I think it is and they're already still spending a hundred billion so it's really not that much they are going to print less they're not going to buy as many stocks and things like that but they're still buying stocks that's what we need to remember the printing press is unlikely to ever really stop and if it does it'll only be for a period of time and eventually they will start printing again hence why you want to uh, well i won't say you want to hence why i want to buy into things that don't uh, have inflation sort of in them, uh, in them other than over for a few years but eventually they get to their uh, fill and then they'll just never be any more and that's most cryptocurrencies not all but most all right one bit of news that i really like though so balancer and Aave have joined forces to launch boosted pools now all the automated markets out there they've got all this liquidity for people to do trading in that but what's interesting is they don't use all the liquidity in trading and so it says down here Traders typically utilize only 10% of the liquidity available on AMM pools since trade sizes are smaller than the available liquidity. So Balancer and Aave have got together and so now what they're going to do is the remaining liquidity often left idle will be deposited into lending protocols allowing the liquidity to earn additional yield. So this is a really big move. DeFi, it's been pretty quiet, particularly, you know, like Aave and all the Ethereum ones because of the uh, scaling issues and things like that and, and the fees, that will get fixed. But the DeFi that we see now, that's basically DeFi version one. We've still got DeFi version two, three, four, five, six, and seven to come. It will continue to evolve. And again, Aave really is one of my picks. Balance has done pretty well. I don't have any balancer. But I continue to follow Aave and I really like Aave. Will this affect the price in the long run of the token themselves? I don't know. My personal belief is I think the governance tokens eventually need to start taking some of the yield that's being made. So not just, uh, you know, the token. It needs to be taking in again, whatever it is, Ethereum or Avalanche, because Aave is on Avalanche as well. It needs to be taking some of that in and then distributing that to the token holders. And that's what will really fix the price. Now, something to remember is there's only 16 million Aave tokens in total. So that's less than Bitcoin. So we're going to have to wait and see how that plays out. Imagine you had Bitcoin that was then paying you more Bitcoin. And we do have that, but eventually the Bitcoin runs out. Whereas with Aave, if Aave was to keep going and then to pay their token holders, again, some of the fees that they generated, and you wouldn't want it to be too much because then, uh, again, it'd just be too much and there'd be other programs that'd be able to pay more. But that is how I think you incentivize people to want to hold the Aave token more and the Balancer token and all the other sort of governance tokens when they're doing these kind of DeFi things. And I do think that's what they will get to eventually because that'll be the only way they can really operate. Um, that's my personal thoughts anyway. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Everyone's on that game train at the moment, but I'm just not sure it's going to last. But I will be absolutely happy to be wrong. I'll see you next time.